In this video, we're going to focus on solving some basic problems associated with parallel plate capacitors. So let's focus on this one. A 5 farad capacitor is charged to 100 volts. Determine the electric charge stored on this capacitor. So the formula that we need is Q, the electric charge is equal to the capacitance, multiplied by the voltage. Now the unit for capacitance is the farad. You need to know that 1 farad is equal to 1 coulomb per volt. So what exactly does that mean? Well, imagine if we have a 10 farad capacitor. If we connect it across a 1 volt battery, it's going to store 10 coulombs of charge. If we connect it across a 2 volt battery, the quantity of charge that it will store will be twice as great. It's going to be 20 coulombs. If we connect it across a 3 volt battery, it can store 30 coulombs. If we put it across a 5 volt battery, it can store 50 coulombs. And if we use a 10 volt battery, 100 coulombs. So notice that the ratio between the amount of charge that the capacitor can hold and the voltage across the capacitor is always equal to 10. Here we have 10 divided by 1 is 10. 50 divided by 5 is 10. 100 divided by 10 is 10. So as we could see, a 10 farad capacitor can hold 10 coulombs of charge per volt that's applied to it. So a 1 farad capacitor can hold 1 coulomb of charge per volt applied to it. And so capacitance tells us how much charge a capacitor can store when 1 volt is applied to it. So hopefully that gave you a good understanding of capacitance and what it is in relation to charge and voltage. But now let's focus on this problem. So we have a 5 farad capacitor. That means that this capacitor can store 5 coulombs per volt. And so if we apply 100 volts to it, it can store 500 coulombs. If we only apply 1 volt to it, it would store 5 coulombs. But 100 volts would lead to 500 coulombs. And so that's it for this problem. That's how you can calculate the electric charge stored on this capacitor. Now let's move on to number two. A capacitor can store 400 coulombs of charge at a voltage of 50 volts. Determine the capacitance. Well we know that the electric charge stored on a capacitor is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the voltage. So to calculate the capacitance we need to divide both sides by V. And so we get this formula. The capacitance is simply the ratio between the amount of electric charge that a, ca a capacitor can store per volt. So in this case, this capacitor can store 400 coulombs of charge when 50 volts is applied to it. And so we could cancel a zero, so it's 40 over 5. So this capacitor can store 8 coulombs of charge per volt. So it's an 8 farad capacitor. Now let's move on to part B. What voltage is required to store a thousand coulombs of charge on this capacitor? So let's go back to this formula. Q is equal to CV. So the electric charge is 1000 coulombs and the capacitance is 8 farads and we're looking for the voltage. So we get to divide both sides by 8. And so V is going to be 1,000 coulombs, and 8 farads is 8 coulombs per volt. So the unit coulombs will cancel, giving us the unit volt. So it's going to be 1,000 divided by 8. So this is going to be 125 volts. And so that's the answer for part B. Number 3. A parallel plate capacitor is composed of two plates that are separated by 0.5 millimeters. The dimensions of each plate are 30 centimeters by 50 centimeters. What is the capacitance of this device? So all you need to make a capacitor is you need two metal plates with an insulator in between. The insulator could be air, it could be paper, it could be glass, but in this example there was no specific material mentioned so we're assuming that air is 
the insulator, or the dielectric between the two metal plates. Now the distance between plates is 0.5 millimeters. And we're given the dimensions of each plate. It's 30 centimeters by 50 centimeters. So with this information, how can we calculate the capacitance of this capacitor? Capacitance is equal to the dielectric constant times the permittivity of free space multiplied by the area of the plates divided by the separation distance. As you increase the area of the plates, the capacitance will increase. If you can bring the metal plates together, if you can decrease the distance, the capacitance can increase. And if you can use an insulated material with a high dielectric constant, that can also increase the capacitance. So those are the three ways in which you can increase the capacitance. Increase the area of the plates, decrease the distance between the plates, and use an insulated material with a very high dielectric constant. Now the dielectric constant for air is approximately 1. The permittivity of free space is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. And the area, we need to convert this to meters. So 30 centimeters, if you divide it by 100, is 0.3 meters. And 50 centimeters is 0.5 meters. And area is length times the width, if you have a rectangle like what we have here. So it's going to be 0.3 meters multiplied by 0.5 meters. And the separation distance, this is 0.5 millimeters but we need to convert that to meters. So that's going to be 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. So let's go ahead and plug this in. So this is going to give us a very small number. 2.655 times 10 to the negative 9 farads. So that's the capacitance. Now, 10 to the negative 9 is nano, so we can also say it's 2.655 nanofarads. So it's a very small unit of capacitance. And so that's it for part A. Now, let's move on to part B. So I'm just going to rewrite the answer here. Calculate the charge on each plate if the capacitor is connected across a 9-volt battery. Now, before we use an equation, let's talk about how a capacitor becomes charged. So before we connect it across the battery, these two plates are electrically neutral. Now, once we connect it across the battery, let's use a 9-volt a battery. So this is the positive terminal of the battery, and this is the negative terminal. Now the electrons on this side will be attracted to the potential difference. So because there's a potential difference of 9 volts, electrons will flow towards the positive terminal of the battery. And so they're going to be pumped from one side of the plate to the other side of the plate. So when you connect a 9 volt battery across the capacitor, it takes electrons from one side and pumps it to the other side. And that's how a battery charges a capacitor. And that's how a capacitor can store electrical energy. Now, once the battery is removed, you're going to have an excess amount of negative charge on the left side. And the right side is going to be electron deficient, so it's going to have a, a net positive charge. And so the voltage across the capacitor will be 9 volts. It's going to be charged to the voltage of the battery. And so let's say if you connect the capacitor to a light bulb if the capacitor is powerful enough, it can light up this light bulb, if the light bulb doesn't require much electricity. Most capacitors are not that strong. So maybe you might need a LED light bulb to view it. So electrons will travel from the negatively charged plate towards the positively charged plate. And it's going to do so until the two plates are neutralized once again. And so now you know how a capacitor can store electric charge and how it can release that charge.
So once you connect it across the battery, a battery simply pumps the electrons from one side to the other side. However, because this is an insulator in between, no electricity flows in between a capacitor, unless if you apply a voltage so high that you can break down the capacitor. But under practical circumstances, no electrons flow through the capacitor without breaking down the dielectric material in between. So electrons can flow in a circuit, but under regular circumstances, it doesn't flow through the insulator. Now let's go ahead and finish part B. So the electric charge is equal to the capacitance multiplied by the voltage. So the capacitance is 2.655 times 10 to the negative 9 farads, and the voltage is only 9 volts. So the amount of electric charge that's going to be stored on this capacitor is very small. It's 2.39 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. And so that's the answer for part B. Now let's move on to part C. Calculate the electric field between the two plates. So let's say this is the two plates. And we have a voltage across it. Eventually this plate will become negatively charged and this plate will become positively charged when the capacitor is fully charged. That is, after the electrons leave this plate and flow through the circuit. So once the capacitor is fully charged, what is the electric field between the two plates? Now the electric field always leaves the positive charge and flows towards the negative charge. So it's in this direction. Now the difference in voltage between these two points is 9 volts, and the separation distance is 0.5 millimeters. So to calculate the electric field, it's basically equal to the voltage divided by the separation distance. So we have a voltage of 9 meters across the two plates, and the distance is 0.5 millimeters, or 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. So if we divide those two, the electric field is 18,000 volts per meter or newtons per coulomb. And so that's how you can calculate it for a parallel plate capacitor. It's simply the voltage across the plates divided by the separation distance. 